Well, here's kind of substantial piece of news. The United Methodist Church, the largest Methodist church in America, after delaying its general conference session, not once, not twice, but three times, so that many conservative Methodists actually left the denomination. And after managing also the pre-session process so that most of the representatives from Africa were not included among the delegates, has come under the control of an overwhelmingly pro-LGBTQ leadership. Decisions made at this 2024 session reflect this new reality. Because of repeated delays to the UMC GC session, a new separate denomination called the Global Methodist Church was formed actually in 2022. Over 7,600 U.S. churches have already left the United Methodist Church, and many of these have reaffiliated with the GMC. So now, in a vote in 2019, when they were still there, the St. Louis UMC GC session, that vote had supported a biblical understanding of marriage and human sexuality, but only by about 53 to 46 percent. The church is just really struggling with this a division over human sexuality. But the 2024 session here, just a few days ago, uh, voted a new definition of marriage receiving 78% support. Marriage, according to the United Methodists now, can be between a man and a woman, or it could be between two persons of more or less any combination. It's a confusing and unbiblical definition. And I, it seems to me inevitable that in the end, this definition is just going to be reduced simply to any random two persons. Uh, sex specific elements, they're just going to disappear. Because you see, the idea that humans are malleable, they can be reshaped, they can be redesigned, however people want to be reshaped and redesigned, that idea has been embraced. And now nothing's going to stand in the way of this new religion. And mark you, it's not a Bible religion, it really is a, a new religion, something at least separate from scripture. What else? Language in the Book of Discipline, the fundamental agreed rule book for how that denomination is run, that also was changed. For example, the single paragraph stating that the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching, they threw that out uh, and voted it out of existence. So now what you're left with is African, Filipino, and other overseas sections of the church which uh, remain are now attempting what has been called regionalization. This is a new plan they have so that different sections, large sections of the church can sort of make up their own plan for how they do things and do it differently in different areas. Will Filipinos coming to new faith in Christ consider joining a, a denomination like that? I guess we'll see. Now at the GC session, the denomination also adopted a new version of its social policy. This is a document they keep voted it and updated at different times and they've updated it. So the church is now unambiguously on the climate change agenda train. So it attacks in their statement, uh, I've got it right here. They attack fossil fuels, they are calling for environmental justice and governmental intervention to enforce it too. That's an interesting piece. Also of interest is the language adopted concerning, wait for it, pandemics. So let me quote it to you. We affirm healthcare as a basic human right. And they go on to say, we call on governments, businesses, churches, and civil society institutions to work cooperatively to ensure that every human being has access to medical services and treatment. And they finally go on to say, we call on national governments and international health organizations and medical groups to work cooperatively and expeditiously to address global pandemics. And they don't mean uh, the problem of being forced to uh, take a shot or something. They mean, uh, you know, let's get in there and make sure that everybody does what they're told to do. So you can sort of see the, the lay of the land there. You know, the WHO and all that stuff sounds like they're, they're pleading with them. Help us, help us with the next pandemic. Please help us. I'm sure they will. Now, Thomas Lambrick, this is his summary. He's a observer and a careful person in Methodist circles. Quote, there is no question that the UMC Church is a new and different denomination today than it was in 2019. The General Conference actions have formalized an evolving consensus among the progressives and centrist parts of the church and reveals they are completely in control of the denomination, unquote. Friends, whole lifetimes of Christian service were given to build up this denomination, but the structure and its institutions proved to be no match for the incoming wave of cultural transformation. 
It's schools, it's universities, it's clergy, seminaries, hospitals, administration has been systematically filtrated with changed values. It's difficult today to identify the religious body that we're talking about as existing in continuity with the, the originating uh, Methodist movement centuries ago. And I believe, friends, we should ask ourselves, are we grounded in the scriptures? Are we ready? Are we individually ready to hold on to truth? Or are we ourselves at risk, no matter what church we're in, are we at risk in our own setting, our own group, of being swept away in this engulfing cultural tsunami ourselves? I'm Larry Kirkpatrick for Horizon Watch.